want you to hit me as hard as you can. Stan Winston solidified his name in the industry by essentially reinventing visual effects and makeup for motion pictures and collaborating with some of Hollywood's biggest names, most of whom would cite Winston as a reason for their box office and critical acclaim. Unafraid to let practical effects and CGI coexist on the screen and willing to adapt as new technology emerged, Winston served as one of the constant voices and minds for a new era of VFX and makeup. We remember Stan Winston. Stanley Winston was born on April 7, 1946 in Arlington, Virginia. Not straying too far from home, Winston attended the University of Virginia to study sculpting and painting. Winston originally wanted to act, but fell in love with makeup and design after seeing Planet of the Apes whose chief makeup artist, John Chamber, was bestowed a Special Achievement Oscar for his work, a rare feat for the time. Stan Winston was actually, perhaps by fate, once attached to an Oliver Stone-produced Apes movie in the mid-90s before it turned into a Chris Columbus-directed Apes project, before fizzling out entirely. Winston moved to Hollywood and established the Stan Winston Studio, humbly housed in a garage. There, Winston took a three-year makeup apprenticeship at Disney. Winston vehemently focused on his craft and, in his mid-twenties, won the Emmy Award for Outstanding Makeup for the TV horror movie Gargoyles, beating out makeup-reliant fare like Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. After nabbing another one the following year for the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, Winston had established himself as one of the most creative new talents in the industry. Thanks for watching We Remember. If you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. Now, back to the show. From there, Winston got the opportunity of a lifetime, working on Star Wars, uh, sort of. It would be the Star Wars Holiday Special, in which he designed the Wookiee family and thus is responsible for this atrocity. Despite inducing nightmares with characters like Lumpy, Winston wasn't shown the exit door in Hollywood. That same year, Winston served as head makeup artist on Sidney Lumet's take on The Wizard of Oz, The Wiz. Winston's most significant recognition at this time was garnering an Academy Award nomination for Best Makeup for Heartbeeps, a remarkably bad movie starring Andy Kaufman as a robot. 25 years later, Winston would design the robot butler in The Benchwormers. Winston lost to Rick Baker's groundbreaking work on An American Werewolf in London but he would be back to the ceremony soon enough to continue his run as one of the most nominated artists in the category. With horror's heyday blossoming and bludgeoning in the early 1980s, Winston could fully come into his own as a makeup and effects artist, notably on zombie movie Dead and Buried, The Remarkable, The Entity, and John Carpenter's The Thing. For that, Winston was brought in to lighten the load of Rob Botton, his puppetry work on The Dog Thing is some of the finest of the time, escalating that key sequence into one of the most memorable moments in the film. Winston would go uncredited, but did receive special acknowledgement in the credits. He, too, went uncredited on Friday the 13th Part 3, but we imagine that's less of a punch. Winston reteamed with John Carpenter for Starman and would help lower rent fare like Ghoulies and Invaders from Mars have a video store shelf life. At the recommendation of Dick Smith, who did the gift-tastic exploding head effect in David Cronenberg's Scanners, and who had worked with Winston on Starman, Winston headed the effects department on James Cameron's The Terminator, working with clay, plaster, silicone, steel, and chrome, Winston and his team molded a truly memorable villain. Winston's collaborations with Cameron are some of the most important in his career. It was for Cameron's next, 1986's Aliens, 
that Winston won his first Oscar for Best Visual Effects, building on the work of H.R. Geiger, who was not a part of the production. They continued the relationship with 1991's Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It was the T-800 design that Winston gave credit to truly making his career, partly due to advanced technology that allowed him to literally and technologically morph his creations, Winston would win his second and third Oscars for Best Makeup and Best Visual Effects. Winston's Terminator contributions would be a staple, co-directing the Universal Studios attraction T2 3D, Battle Across Time, working on Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, without Cameron, and prematurely ending his career with Terminator Salvation. Following T2, Winston co-founded Digital Domain with Cameron and Industrial Light and Magic Journal Manager Scott Ross. Although he left in 1998, one can easily draw a line with Winston's mark on the company to its later ties to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially considering Winston's stellar work on Iron Man. The late 1980s was a notable stretch for Stan Winston. He not only earned another Oscar nomination for Predator, hired at the insistence of Schwarzenegger, but concocted clever spins on iconic Universal monsters for the Monster Squad. There was Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, The Mummy, The Gill Man, and The Wolf Man, complete with nards. It was shortly after that he made a foray into directing, with 1988's Pumpkinhead and 1990's A Gnome Named Norm, doling out makeup and VFX duties to his own Stan Winston studio. The 1990s marked moments of adaptation and collaboration for Winston. Building off of his love of monsters and skill at presenting them to audiences, Winston was hired to handle the effects and makeup for Interview with the Vampire probably his best work to go largely unrecognized by most major industry guilds. In the same decade, he designed the Gorillas for Congo, the science experiments for the island of Dr. Moreau, and the 32-foot alligator for Lake Placid. In the early part of the decade, Winston established relationships with two other key collaborators, Tim Burton and Steven Spielberg. But, as with most pairings, Winston was not one to take sole credit, often linking his own success to writers and directors. Quote, it's not just about effects, it's about character. It's about writers writing wonderful stories with fantastic characters and me being able to create a visual image that's beyond what you would expect. For Burton, he earned an Oscar nomination designing Edward Scissorhands, uh, Scissor Hands, and doing the Penguin's grotesque face prosthetics on Batman Returns. He would work for Burton one more time on 2003's Big Fish. With Spielberg, Winston would help change the landscape of cinematic special effects forever. Winston had been transfixed with animatronics since the 70s when he visited Disney's Hall of Presidents. Winston and company wouldn't be creating a life-size Abe Lincoln, but rather a 20-foot tall, 40-foot long, nearly 9-ton Tyrannosaurus Rex, which one leading paleontologist said was, quote, the closest I've ever been to a live dinosaur. After all, Winston did once say, quote, Designs don't come from just purely imagination. Designs come from imagination grounded in reality. Winston's other creations for the film include the Dilophosaurus, which kills Wayne Knight, the Velociraptor, which was scaled up for dramatic effect, and a baby Triceratops, ultimately cut from the film. For the groundbreaking work, Winston and his team won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. It would be Winston's fourth and final Oscar, although he would earn two more nods for his next two Spielberg collaborations, The Lost World, Jurassic Park, and AI, Artificial Intelligence, designing robot teddy bear Teddy, 
Stan Winston Studio also handled effects for War of the Worlds and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The 2000s saw Winston branch out even further. Aside from the quintet of TV movies collectively known as Creature Features, send-ups of the sort of 50s schlock MST3K would have a field date with. Winston created a line of figures based on said series, launched a short-lived comic series, Stan Winston's Realm of the Claw, Mutant Earth, and ventured into video games with surreal software's The Suffering. Quote, it made great sense to me to be a part of the creation of a really cool video game that will scare the shit out of you. In 2001, Stan Winston became the first visual effects artist to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Winston was hired for McGee's Terminator Salvation to help, quote, carry on the tradition. He started with James Cameron a quarter century earlier. With just one month left in production, Stan Winston died on June 15, 2008, at the age of 62. The cause was multiple myeloma, a cancer of the plasma cells, which he was diagnosed with seven years prior. Posthumous releases included G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, and Avatar. At the time of his death, Winston was trying to establish the Winston Effects Group. He was also on the board of the Free Arts for Abused Children, whose goal was to, quote, inspire hope in the lives of children who have experienced abuse, neglect, homelessness, and chronic poverty through innovative creative arts programs and positive interactions with caring adult volunteer mentors.